We're going to take a look at Alibaba Cloud, and we're going to take a look at OSS. So we're going to go ahead and go into our object storage service over here and kind of take a look at what we've got for how we put together building out a, a basic bucket for this. If you've never activated it before, go ahead and click on Activate Now and they'll walk you through all this. You have to agree to terms of service and make sure you've got a payment set up and everything else. So object storage, and then just go ahead and activate it now. And that should pretty much so work on getting you all set up. And then we're gonna go ahead and then confirm it. Um, so this may take a minute. We're gonna go there. So I think we've got that all set up. See if that actually goes. Ah, oh, there we go. All right, so in this service, right, once you've activated it, you've gone through the whole thing, you've, you've done all the things, right, you end up here. And what they actually do is they'll go ahead and you can migrate your data and see some graphical management tool if you want to, um, either through your browser. Um, if you want to, you can actually go ahead and use the OSS browser um, to kind of help you get to where you want to go. Um, command line management tool for downloads. You can download all these things to kind of help you out. Um, you can do online migration, some common features, especially versioning, um, any kind of domain names in case you want to have a static website hosted off of this. So there's a lot of neat things you can do once you get here. You can sort by region, sort by storage class. You can create a bucket. You can view whatever buckets you've got. And of course, we have no buckets right now, but we can go ahead and we can create one. So if we're going to create a bucket name, and this is what you're going to do, we can go um, Dan test bucket making. See if that works. Cannot start and with a hyphen contain only lowercase letters. Oh man, Dan test bucket making. And we don't want to have it in China. I want to go ahead and let's move it to. Um, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and drop it in, in Virginia. Virginia's got the best prices for me, given to where I'm at. Standard storage class, you know, just basically high performance, reliable. It's whatever you do with it. Infrequent access, right? Infrequent access is a little bit more interesting and than anything that's archived. Um, anything that's over um, a certain amount of time. And you can just go ahead and use, um, you have to restore the app objects in the bucket before you can use them and all that other good stuff. We'll just do standard. Um, if you want to do versioning, if you want to be able to say that I have version one, version two, version three of a file, you can click on that. It cannot be featured um, and disabled or enabled after it's been made. So you, this is a very intentional decision to enable versioning, right? Access control list, you can do private, you can do public read or do public read, right? That means anyone can access your bucket without prior authentication. This is great for websites. If you want to do that, um, if you wanted to have someone be able to upload to your to your website um, for public right, then that would be another thing that you would want to take a look at. But you'd want to have some provisioning around that. Um, so you can just go ahead and continue with that if you want. But we're going to go ahead and just make this public read by clicking continue here. Encryption method. Do we want to have none? Or do we want to have it as, as OSS managed? So if you don't want to manage keys or anything else, you just want to have it straight up encrypted, go OSS manage and then key management. If you want to have Alibaba do the key management for you, um, we're not going to activate that. So we'll just let them do OSS and we'll do AES 256. That's perfectly fine. Real time log query. We're going to kind of hold off on this because I don't really want to deal with the logs right now. So there's a lot of logs and then any kind of advanced settings that you really wanted to go into hierarchical namespace. No, that's not really that big a deal. All right, but that's how you make a bucket, right? And so note, storage class and zone um, cannot be changed after the bucket is created. So create a bucket. And then they'll go, after versioning is enabled, you know, they're going to give you all the warnings. Hey, be careful what you're doing. Don't do anything weird. And then we're just going to go ahead and we'll create the bucket. And then versioning is enabled for the bucket. So make sure what you've got. We can actually go ahead and, and configure that. Collect your frequently used features. OK, thank you. Bucket versioning, excessive delete markers may degrade performance. So be careful about how you're doing this. And if you're going to do versioning, make sure that you've got um, reasonable. If you're going to do a lot of read writes and deletes, don't do versioning. That's that's not what you want to do. If it's going to be a static website or you're going to be doing a lot of imagery or movies and you want to make sure that if something gets deleted accidentally, you can bring it along and all the rest of it. Um, we do have a life cycle rule uh, that you'd want to configure 
if, if you want to do it because we did just basic all the process on that one and now you can just go back through and take a look at all your other things basic statistics you know what's popular what's region so maybe your your bucket is in virginia but you're finding out a lot of your customers are in indonesia you know maybe you go to content distribution network off of that move it around however you want to do it um, if anybody's going through api basic settings or some things you can change um, access control if you need to bucket if you need to change things so you can actually go in and change your bucket policy to a certain point right but we're keeping it as public read any kind of extra policies grant permissions for your ram users ram console so you can actually manage user identities this is great if you want to programmatically go to items in your oss rather than by person you can actually just go ahead and do something that's a little bit more private where you have to have a, an authentication token or use someone else's credentials assume an identity uh, make sure that hotlink protection um, to prevent unauthorized users from getting your data uh, across origin resource sharing cores um, this is really kind of interesting because there's some really interesting problems in cores which we'll cover later on if you get into devops you'll want to know a lot more about cores um, okay yep we can delete a bucket if we want so we're not going to delete the bucket though bucket inventory what's in there there's going to be nothing in there um, pay by requester and again that's all the things that you can do here along the way Right, so basic settings, redundancy for false tolerance. If you want to do some cross-region replication, same region replication and versioning, um, transmission, domain names, if you want to actually attach a domain name to it for doing your static websites and all the rest of it. But that's all you need to do is just go ahead when you make in your bucket, give it a good name, do object storage service. And remember, if you haven't done it yet before, you know, don't, don't feel bad, just go ahead and activate it now. And then once you've got it all activated and your, your order is complete and you're ready to go, just go to your OSS and then go ahead and make your test bucket. Have some fun with it. Um, but you do have to have a payment system set up for this to make it go. And then you can just kind of see who all has done what on your bucket and how they went ahead and did things. And that's it. That's how you make a bucket. So that's your project. Go ahead and make a bucket. When you're done, just go ahead and, and give us this page so that we know that you've got it all set and versioning is enabled. Make sure that's on and that's it. I will see you in the next project.